Hey y'all, so I am in, uh, where am I? I am in Idaho Falls, Idaho. And I had my second night at a Walmart here, the first night at this particular Walmart, my second night at a Walmart generally. Went really well. There were a lot of RVers and van lifers and I mean, the bottom of Vail Life first but just people in and out camping and people who I think were sleeping in a truck or a car or something. So there was a, a bit of noise and generators and stuff like that, but that really, really bothered me. Actually, my problem last night was my back hurt, which is weird because I've been sleeping here for months and had no back problems, but that last night I did. It made me because I have a bunch of extra blankets and they were next to me. Maybe it made me like be squished and I slept weirdly on my shoulders, but my back hurts so bad. However, I went to Planet Fitness this morning and the Planet Fitness here is, for, is are huge. And I actually finally went to the black card area where they have like the, the chair massagers. Oh my gosh. I was so good for my back. My back being sore was so nice. Okay, I'm totally gonna use that all the time now. Totally gonna use it all the time. Platypus was so huge. I was the only person in there taking a shower. Now it was Sunday morning. My are actually slow, but the one by me that I go to, tons of people take showers, but here I'm thinking it's not as common. And I think there's a couple reasons people take showers. One is there are other people who are living in their car or whatever. And then the other reason is because people will commute from really far away. And they drive in for an hour, hour and a half. They do it super early in the morning so they miss the traffic. And then they go to the gym and take a shower at where by where they work. So it makes a lot of sense. I'm, I'm thinking that this strategy of sleeping at Walmart, and I even picked out a Cracker Rail in Salt Lake, um, is is a good strategy for when I'm near towns as a place to sleep because when you're in a car finding places that are careful finding places that are dispersed camping is harder because I can't just look at I overledger and know that my car can get there if you have some high clearance four wheel drive it's fine but in this car I may get to that spot and then it's like I look at the road I'm like there ain't no way you know and I have to go find another spot but I definitely could drive on any Walmart or Cracker Barrel lot so I. I think I'm gonna do that for the time being. It's funny because in my the city where I usually stay, I actually sleep on the side of the road. I have a really great spot that I really like. But I think that that's harder to do in other parts of the country where you don't know where the good places are. You know, you don't know if this is a good spot to sleep. So in other cities, you can sleep in parking lots. Like where I live, you're not allowed to. They you know what? There's always gonna be a sign that says no overnight camping allowed. Any lot of any size. Or it just says unauthorized people will be towed. Like it doesn't even say no overnight parking. It just is like, no, there's no general. So today I, as I said, went to Planet Fitness, went to Starbucks. I actually got food and coffee at Starbucks because I was going to sit there for a while and I did some work there. Now I'm across the street in the parking lot of Lowe's just because they have trees here. And so I could be in the shade. Not that I really needed to be in the shade because it's not hot this morning. The weather here is so interesting. So it gets to the 80s during the day, but it's in the 40s at night and for a fair amount of the morning. Like it's still, it's nine something, it's still in the high 40s. But it's gonna be like 80 something. So I'm wearing shorts and a t-shirt, but I have a little sweater on. I'm actually wearing my sweater instead of a sweatshirt. I feel very civilized. I actually put jewelry on as I felt so like fresh and clean after taking a shower after all these days. So I have some changes to my trip itinerary. After this, tonight, I'm actually gonna spend the night like on the way to the national parks that I'm going to. I'm hoping the couple turnouts on a mountain pass that I'm hoping one of them or all of them will be good places. And I'll just drive up there so I get there close to sunset, but not when it's dark, because I'm not comfortable with that. And then I'll just hang out there and go to bed. Hopefully it'll be okay for me to find a place to go to the bathroom. One of them is actually a trailhead that should have a bathroom. So that's an idea that if I, there's a lot of people around and, or there's not no trees up there or something where I know where to pee at the end of the day. Um, I do have my like toilet thing. I have my little pop-up tent, but I'm not putting that up. I, I feel weird putting that up on a random turnout <laughs> side of a highway. <laughs> I don't know if I'm up for that. And then, then I could go to the national parks starting really early Monday morning. And so I'll go to the national parks. I actually paid for the pro version of Park Wolf. And I actually didn't pay for it. I have a seven day trial to the pro version of Park Wolf. So I'm going to do a review about that, by the way. But the, how the, you have, how it works is that it has, you don't have to be connected to the internet and that it has a thing where you have it on while you're driving to the park and it tells you where all the next turnout is, where the next gas is, or what the next stuff is that's coming up and plays like an audio. 
And I'm going to see what that's like because that may be really helpful because it's hard traveling to national parks by yourself because I can't like look at the map and the guy at the same time as driving like on the side of a cliff and looking for animals that uh, kill them or me, right? So, and also people because idiots will just like walk randomly like in the middle of the road because like, oh, I want to take a picture of this bison. It's like, can you please not get hit by a car? Or killed by the bison, for that matter. Wow, parks here are open so late and so early. That's awesome. Where I usually am is 8 a.m. to sunset. Which, let me tell you, in the winter, that's really early. I mean, this is really nice. There's a lot of things I like about Idaho. And also I like about kind of small city. This is a city, but it's a small city. You know, they actually, I mean, it's big enough to have two super Walmarts to give you an idea of the size, but I don't know, chill. I mean, it's Sunday morning. It's a very religious place. So I think a lot of people are going to church, but still. So I've been thinking a lot about how I want to travel in the future. When I was driving yesterday, I had a couple hours where I wasn't listening to audiobooks or anything like that. And I was just thinking. Actually, what I do is actually I think out loud and I talk. That's one of the reasons I do this, because this is a lot of me thinking out loud. But then I wasn't recording. I was just thinking to myself. And there's a couple of different kind of kinds of travel. There is fast travel where you go to a different place, 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 place every night. There's this kind of, on the other extreme, very, very, very slow travel. You know, this is the people who go to court site and spend six months there. And, or they go to some RV park and actually pay by the month and are there for six months or a year or whatever. Versus all the, and then there's, you know, it's a spectrum. So there's all the stuff in the middle. Right now, I'm on this extreme where I'm doing almost place, 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 place. Now, I am going to go to a national park for three nights and another national park for three nights. But besides that, I'm going place, place, place. I really like that kind of travel. Now, it is kind of expensive from a gasoline perspective. However, gas here is less than $4 a gallon, which is so much cheaper than California. But still, it can be expensive. Now, I'm obviously sleeping in my car, so that cuts out a lot of the cost, especially when I stay in, you know, a Walmart parking lot or, what, or dispersed camping or something that's free. Thinking about my plans over the next few years, what I'm thinking as far as travel goes is that, you know, while I'm here in this car, in the Honda Civic, I'm going to be doing all the national parks in the 48 connected states and all 48 connected states. So finishing out the last 11 states that I haven't been to. So next year, Minnesota is my last Midwestern state. And then after that, in, I'm thinking 2025, the year after that, I'll do the do an East Coast trip and hit all the East Coast things. And I'll do that in this car because this car is very stealth. So that's what I'm planning to do for the next two years is get for the 48 states, get through all the national parks, all the states. And then I will still have some national parks left because I've once you have to fly Guam, Virgin Islands, that kind of stuff. I'll do those later. I'm not going to worry about them right now because you need the money at the time to be able to go on big long trips. I have not, I've been to Hawaii a couple of times at the national parks there, but Alaska I've not done too. I'll probably end up doing that in two different trips because there's so many national parks and they're far apart. And some of them you have to take a bush plane too. So that costs a lot more money. So I'll probably do one trip in a vehicle, but that will be after I get high clearance or high clearance four wheel drive or high clearance all wheel drive. Theoretically, the Subaru Outback, which is high clearance all wheel drive. Then what I'm planning to do then is do my Alaska trip, or at least the first Alaska trip, the one that I drive in. I'll go to up Alaska, then I'll probably go over to the Yukon, do a bunch of stuff in Canada all the way back. And then I want to start doing some kind of a different style of travel. Instead of going from place, 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 state, 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 state national park, national park, national park. Go to a state and spend months there. You know, go to Nevada. Be like, okay, I'm going to be in Nevada and I'm going to go be here for a couple months. And then go to, you know, all the different state parks and reserves and obscure little place that you can get to. And this is where I need the high clearance all-wheel drive because there's a lot of places that you need that for, uh, especially in Western states. And so hit all those kind of things. And during that time, also start working on my land. I'm hoping on this trip in a couple of weeks, I'm going to actually go to my land. I say hoping because you just never know with weather or whatever. I'll have to drive my car to a, find a spot to park at that is appropriate for this car and then walk in the rest of the way. Hopefully I will. I'll have to walk like a mile or something like that and then take some pictures and videos and stuff like that of my land. But I'm not going to actually do anything there because I can't really drive the car there yet. It will be, I'll have to wait until I get my next vehicle. I'm going to have to see too the state of the road. There is a road, but is it high clearance all-wheel drive? road or is it a four-wheel drive road that will really change things for me so i was gonna edit video today but i'm just too tired 
I have to be awake to edit video and I'm just like dragging. So I think what I do, I just had Panera, sat in my car and had Panera and relax for a little bit. I don't, since I don't feel very good, because I feel headachy. So I was actually able to eat Panera bread. What I think I'm gonna do is go back to the park that I was at. It was a big giant parking lot. No one cares what you're doing. And I'm gonna organize my clothes. Hopefully I can find a spot that is not full sun. I don't know. They might all be in the full sun, but we'll see. And then I can organize all my clothes and it's something I could do right now. It's only a little before one o'clock, so I don't really want to leave yet, quite yet. And then after that, I'll go grocery shopping and pick up my groceries. Tonight, I haven't decided where I'm going to sleep. I actually was thinking about going to either a BLM campground that's like $10 that has pit toilets or go to just stop at a rest stop. But at the rest stop, I kind of need to go later in the day. So I'm not like at the rest stop for huge amounts of time. You can rest at a rest stop, but you can't camp, which means you can be there to sleep, but you can't like be hanging out all day. You know, maybe I'll go to the rest stop first. It's a cheap and the closest and see how it is and then make a decision from there. Okay, so I got my clothes all organized. I know it probably doesn't look it, but you can see it like I actually have things in my little clothes organization containers. <laughs> and I didn't organize everything. What I did was I pulled out all the underwear and undershirts. I pulled out, I have all the socks, I have all the linen separate, and I have all the pajamas. And I have in here a pair of sweatpants and a button down like super warm um, flannel. The idea is that way if I need to wear that, First thing in the morning, I have it <laughs> for whatever morning I wake up tomorrow morning or some other morning where it's super, super cold. And I have like that as an extra layer. I have my long underwear, my wool long underwear that's in my pajama thing. And I have been opened up my bag that's uh, vacuum sealed that has like my jackets and my hat and all that kind of stuff in it. I will probably end up opening it tomorrow night but my thought is I could open up tomorrow night when I'm at the campground and then I'll probably kind of spread out and handle that stuff more but is that I'm actually really glad I got back here number one to lay down because I needed to lay down for a bit but also so I could arrange all that stuff because I really wanted to make sure that tonight if I get cold I can easily put on long things the one thing that I don't have is I didn't bring my long, I can't find at least, I don't think I brought my long sleeve pajamas. I have two shirts that I use as long sleeve pajamas, not because they were meant to be pajamas, but just because they're long sleeve t-shirts that don't have any buttons or, or anything like that. I don't, I don't know if they're in there. I couldn't, didn't see them. I didn't pull out everything because I didn't want to make a, have to refold and re-roll up everything. Worst case scenario, I just put on a, another long sleeve shirt. I mean, it's not like that's a really big deal, but that's like one of the thing I forgot that I regret. I am really just relaxing and passing the time because the only work thing that I have left to do is edit video and I'm too tired to edit. I need to be fairly awake. Yeah, so I'm at a Walmart in Idaho and I did my grocery shopping for this trip. I already have shelf stable stuff. Now the only shelf stable stuff I thing I bought was some crackers because I was out of, I'm out of crackers and any you know, things like that. Except for those really big ones that I use you know, more of a sandwich. They're not really like snacky. I need at least one snacky kind of thing. So I got, obviously I got those wheat thins. This was the most, second most expensive thing on my list. Eggs. Okay, eggs. I got cage-free eggs. A dozen eggs for $2.82. Okay. For some of you, that's not cheap. For me, I'm like, oh my gosh, that is so cheap. So I got sharp, extra sharp shredded cheese. So extra sharp cheese allegedly does not technically need to be refrigerated it of course says that on the label because it will keep longer it's refrigerated there's 12 slices in here so my thought is i'm gonna be it's gonna be cold where i'm going it's not i'm not gonna have any hot days once i leave here like here it's 80 in the 80s i'm not gonna be in the 80s for until i'm back here again on friday so um i think it'll be fine i want to go eat that within like this will be my for my sandwiches and snacks this is for dinner tonight <laughs> this was the most expensive thing i got and i don't regret it at all because i wanted an, a salad that was already made green onions i i thought this would be good for a meal to add some variety i got a whole bag of carrots because you can't get an individual carrot there so i just got a whole bag of carrots and i'm gonna probably eat this for 
at breakfast meal and my dinner meal. So I'm not gonna worry about putting this all away right this second. It's really loud. It can be fine in my car, but all this stuff was $19.66, including the tax. All right, but anyway, so less than 20 bucks for all my perishables that this is, and the reason I got carrots is because carrots will last, should last for fairly long. And I remembered to bring all the things to get carrots up. And spinach, I think, will last pretty long. I don't know if that spinach is pre-washed. I'll have to deal with that. I'm gonna deal with that later. Um, and I think this will all make really good dishes. So what I'm planning to have as, as far as perishable is, as cheese for cheese sandwiches or cheese on crackers. So there's 12 slices of cheese. Each slice is four grams of protein. So if I have two slices, that's six for each thing. That's six meals. Maybe sometimes I even have three. Then for four meals, that works out for good for four days. And then I'm planning to have fried rice for breakfast, for breakfast, which I might not eat breakfast, that cooked breakfast first thing. I might have that at like the mid morning. And then for later in the day, when I'm at my hot, the other hot meal besides breakfast, I'm gonna have like a stir fry. And the protein will either be uh, canned chicken or it will be not cheese, obviously, because that sounds like what they're stir fry, or it'll be peanuts or cashews, I have cashews. And then I have my salad. There's the, this is a big salad. I mean, this is only, but it's per serving. So this is 200 calories per serving, 3.5 servings per container. Yeah, because we're gonna share this with three other people. Six carbs, like this, so 600, 750 probably calories. This is a great meal. In, Ida, in this Idaho Falls town, they don't really bother to shade parking spots. Maybe it just doesn't get hot enough here. I don't know. I mean, it's in the 80s right now. It's hotter than it is in where I usually am in California. I'm planning to leave here around 6.30. I'm, my plan is to stop at a rest stop and sleep there. So I want to get there a little before the sun goes down. I don't want to get there after dark just because I've never been there before. You know what I mean? So it kind of stresses me out. But I have looked at it on Google Maps. Suppose, and you can sleep at a rest stop but you're not supposed to camp we'll see how it is i have some other ideas for where i could sleep but that's my current plan hey all so i am in an undisclosed location that i can't film in because it's not legal maybe we no one really knows so first i'm going to tell you a little bit about what's going on but second if you want to see pictures of when i'm in national parks follow me on instagram it's elizabeth off grid at elizabeth off grid and i'll link to it below in the comments or something because yeah taking you can take photos and put it on your instagram or whatever sell them that generally speaking is seem is okay as long as you are obeying certain rules like you don't set up tripods and and interfere like there's all there's all there's a set of rules i don't i'm actually going to go back and look them up and i'll talk about that since i'm a lawyer i can help them with, help you with that sometime but for filming video they've gone back and forth about it you know it may be that you have a first amendment right i mean i actually think yes your first amendment right to do that as long as you're not interfering with anybody and there should be a common sense standard that you know your own like let's they could even make it as strict as you're only allowed to use your phone you know or you only allowed to use a handheld camera or it, you know you can use a tripod but it only can be this kind or you know what i mean and the permitting system should be something that is similar what they should actually do is something just like drones. So if you want to fly a drone anywhere, you don't have to like fill out a form and then six months later get approved for a license. There's an app and you you immediately get a, per, you have to actually pass a test and then be allowed to do, do uh, fly a drone. Either it's a little tiny thing to do, just amateur, or if you want to do commercial, take a test, which is some re reason I haven't flown a drone is because I've, I need to take my commercial test, which I haven't done yet. Maybe I'll do it November, December. And you then you have this app where you have to get permission to fly each time, but it's instantaneous. As long as you're obeying the rules, it's instantaneous. And that's really what they should do in the national park. But they are not there yet. We'll see if they actually ever get to that point. So I am in an undisclosed national park. Absolutely beautiful. Check out my Instagram if you want to see photos and things of it. But last night I spent the night at a rest stop. I've never spent the night at a rest stop. It was in Idaho. 
that gives you an idea of which national parks I might be at, one of two that are close to there. And in Idaho, you're not supposed to camp in a rest stop, but you can be there for eight hours. I was there for a little more than that, but I, I pretty much just slept. I actually had a migraine yesterday, so I got there, used my migraine set device, my cephaly device for an hour, and then pretty much just went, you know, read a book for a little bit and then went to bed. And there were, I think, one, two, three, three or four other cars and an RV, like a trailer and a tractor trailer at that particular one. So which, which I liked that. I liked that there was a few people, you know, so it felt it would be creepiest if there was just one other person. <laughs> it was a beautiful location on a river, on the Snake River. Absolutely great. I would have actually gone further and I had originally planned to go further, but because I had a migraine, I did not want to be driving through mountain passes. I thought that was a, and I I'm glad I did because that would have been too much for me. However, I didn't want to drive it until it was about, I started driving about an hour before sunrise. I wanted to be just starting to lighten up. And I kind of wish I would have started driving at like 5 a.m. and then the first part in the dark because I didn't want to since I still didn't, still didn't feel the best. But the thing is, there were so many people already. Now the hike I went on was a three mile hike, an easy hike. It wasn't really easy for me because of the altitude, but that's just me getting used to it. It's all, it was only at like 6,300 or something feet, but I'm just, you know, still adapting to altitude on for this trip. However, it was a beautiful hike. There was a, a lake with the mountains. I took this great picture with the reflection. The, it was the picture I wanted. It was the picture I wanted. Like, I'm like, oh, I'm complete. I've seen these mountains. I've seen the glacier. I took the picture I wanted. I took, went on a nice hike. I'm good. I'm still going to drive through the rest of it and look at a lot of things, of course. But, and so I went, left for my hike at 8.30 a.m. It was a two hour hike and it took me about two hours. On the way back in the last half of the hike, so many people, so many people. And I mean, tour groups full of, pe of people, where it's like 20 people in a group. And I'm like, and the thing is, there's not that much room at the lake. So when I was there, there was like a family, you know, two parents with two kids and then I'm assuming their parents. And then there was like, you know, another a couple came up. I mean, it was not that many people. And, but there's not much space. I was kind of over off to the side. I found the great location to get the reflection photo that I'm very happy with. But the, once you get those tour groups, not fun, not fun. So I guess I can go to one of the places because it was crazy, like paper cars all along the road. And I'm like, no, I already saw a different lake. I'm good. I don't need this lake too. So, the here, the funny thing is though, I'm at this national park and the big sites are crazy busy, but I'm at a turnout. I haven't even gone to read the little thing yet. And there's two other cars here. There's no, I don't think there's a hiking trail. I think it's literally just a turnout, but I'm just doing this so I can record a video and also literally just sit here and look at the mountains and it's lovely. I'll eventually walk over there and see what that little thing says. For the rest of the time that I'm in this park, I'm not spending that here. I'm just going to be like going to different turnouts and looking around. I haven't seen, besides small animals and birds, I haven't seen any big animals yet. I think you probably need to be up early, like earlier. So I'm hoping that over the next couple of days, I'll be able to see something. I've seen elk before many times, multiple times. I have never seen a moose. I've seen a bear. Bears that scare me a little bit, but so I'm okay with not seeing another bear. <laughs> I've never seen a wolf. Highly unlikely that I would see a wolf. I've seen bison before. So really, the thing that I would really like to see on this trip is a moose. I actually didn't even know there were moose in the 48 connected states. I thought they were only in Alaska for some reason and Canada. So um, that would be really neat to see, but I don't know. I don't know if it's the right time of year for that. So I was gonna do a picnic. <laughs> I was gonna cook food at that picnic table right there. Um, but it's raining. It wasn't supposed to rain, but here we are. Here we are at little over the continental divide on a mountain pass. This is a good reminder to myself <laughs> that I need to have my rain gear inside the car. Hey all, so I have just been doing bathing inside a car. <laughs> um, I'll eventually make a video exactly how I do this. 
but it actually works really well for a washcloth bath. I kind of have a little system for my washcloth bath. I'm obviously not washing my hair, which is totally fine. I can go a while without that. And it's not like I really, it really matters that much, but I do feel yucky. I am at a campground. I have all my windows covered up. It's because I'm in here bathing <laughs> and I was outside eating a pot water. And the only thing that's outside my car is my chair and then the stuff I was just using to heat up the water. What I think I'm going to focus on first thing in the morning are the touristy places that will get really full later in the day. And I mean later as in 9, 30, 10 o'clock. So I want to hit those places before 9, 30, 10. And then when I hit 9, 30, 10, that's when I'm going to make my breakfast like I did today. It actually worked really good. I had my breakfast, like hot breakfast, 9, 30, 10 o'clock. And then in the afternoon, like around three, I went to another picnic area and had another hot meal. It was very satisfying and actually worked really well when I was traveling. It was a good break. So anyway, I'm thinking I'll hit the most busy places first thing in the morning. Maybe I'll go to two different places. I, it'll just depend on how long I take of the first one. I was actually, I got, downloaded a few Kindle Unlimited books about the national parks that I'm going to. And I put up one and it was, it, and it was good reminder of the generic things that everyone should go see. There's a couple of things that I've had. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Then the other book, I look at the itineraries and it assumed you were staying in a hotel. And so it, since it assumed that, it had all these things about going to these restaurants and going to your hotel and all these things. And I'm just like, I, I mean, obviously a lot of people who come to a national park stay in a hotel. There's nothing obviously wrong with that. I've done that myself in the past, but it just assumed that's what you were doing, which I thought was interesting, you know? So I was like, mm, I don't think this is the thing for me. What I'm thinking is um, I'm going to start out, I'm actually going to sleep in clothes and wear, like I'm going to put clothes on and sleep in them and then wear them tomorrow morning. So I won't even have to get dressed. I'm just going to wake up like that because I'm going to change my clothes at like 10 o'clock. So there's not really anything weird about that. I'm going to sleep with my windows all rolled up tonight and I'm going to see how that goes. Because the thing is, if you have windows open, so in a place that's a bear country, you're supposed to keep all your windows rolled up. So we're going to see how that goes. It's going to be really cold. So my thought is that it will be fine, but we'll see. Good morning. I'm at a undisclosed location where I'm not allowed to film. At a little picnic area that is just gorgeous with a creek, river, whatever it is running through it. And I made hot breakfast, which I already ate up, and drinking my coffee. So I got up hours ago and went straight to one of the really busy places. So it wouldn't be busy. I mean, there were people there, but it wasn't like crazy busy. The weird thing about national parks is not all of them are super busy, but some of them are very, very busy, including this one. And there's a lot of people who are going to the same things because there's like a couple of things for that each national park, well, some of them may never heard of, but the big national parks that everybody goes to see. Oh, this is the famous thing. And there's, you know, a handful of things, maybe five. And everyone stops at those things, maybe a little bit more at some places. But then there's a ton of other things that literally no one's stopping at or almost no one's stopping at. They're not on the map or they're not emphasized on the map. They're not in the blog posts or YouTube videos that talk about that park. Those are the coolest places. So right now I'm still hitting the big things and I'm trying to hit them early enough in the day so they're not busy. I have two more big things left. One I'm going to go to next. It's pretty, it's like an hour away or something. I don't know, four minutes away. So like, and that's something that's not been on my list. It's on my list personally as well as the list. And then there's one more thing after that. And I think I'll do that tomorrow morning or the next day morning. So I'll do it super early. It's actually pretty close to where I'm camping. So I can do that before, also before breakfast. So before people go. But I think after that, like I've driven past so many places I didn't stop at because I was going to the big places. So there's all these other things to see and just hikes to go on. I, I don't have a hike plan for today. I might not hike today. I haven't decided. But yeah, like there's so many things to do that most people don't do. They say only, what was the statistic I saw? Only 10% of people walk more than a certain number of feet from their car. And then half of those walk like less than a mile. And then only 1% actually go to the back country. It's 1% still a lot because there's hundreds of thousands of people come here every year. But yeah. You know. Oh, another thing I wanted to talk about was the crowds. So 
obviously I like not having crowds. I like it when I'm, it's, I'm in an isolated place and there's nobody around or the, there's just a few other people around who are like hiking people, camping people versus, versus tourists. However, I do not begrudge or um, the people who are here, all the tourists. The reason is, is that the more people who come to national parks, the more people who will support national parks, the more money will be donated to the national park foundations, the more volunteer work that will happen, the more likely that they'll support politicians like spending money on. Them. So it is important to have it be accessible to everyone, not just people like me who want to go camping, not just people who go backpacking, but also people who are disabled and there needs to be disabled like things for wheelchairs to go on. There needs to be things for people who would never camp in a million years. They need to stay in a hotel. They need to eat at a restaurant. They're not someone who's going to make their food <laughs> on a picnic table because you want all those people to support this too. This is something like, was it Ken Burns that talked about how the national parks were the best thing that the United States ever did? That's probably true. But I think that's true, especially how this has Having all this land in the United States that's owned by the federal government, which means it's owned by all of us, national parks, the the national monuments, the preserves, the BLM land, the national forests, we all own this collectively. It is incredibly democratic and it is different than in other places. You know, the crown never owned this. No duke ever owned this, you know. Now, you could also argue maybe nobody should own this not even us. Also, we stole it from indigenous people, which, you know, yes. But the fact that we were preserving this and we're actually making an effort and then also making it accessible for people to see is an important thing for everybody. Like humanity is a general thing. And it's important to have land for different purposes, have places that are accessible to everyone, have places that are wilderness, have places that are preserved for the various animals and such. We want to have different things for different levels of so different types of people and things that are not even for people really at all. But this is an important preservation for human beings in general. And so it is a absolutely wonderful thing that we've done as a country. So I was out walking on this nature trail and there's this lady drawing, which I think is so neat. And I wish I would have brought my drawing stuff with me. I'm not great at drawing. I want to take some classes in it so I can draw more what I see in my head. I also have some books on it. I might just use the books too, but it might be helpful to take class. Anyway, the slave was drawing and she had this little book and she's drawing in of this boulder. And she and she's like, don't mind me. I'm just drawing my, this is my annual drawing of this boulder. Every year she comes and draws this boulder. She also draws many other things every year. Like she has an, every year she comes to draws the same boulder, the same waterfall, the same this, this. And I'm just like, that is so cool. And then it's like little small book. So you can really go through it. I mean, that is so cool. Drawing, I think, would be a really great thing for me to add <laughs> to my travels. Because while photography is great, there is something nice about how you have to take time to draw or paint for that matter. I mean, I also have watercolors. I might do both because watercolors might be great for certain things, you know, sunsets and, and things that are very color-based. But yeah, like... You sit and are at peace and you're taking this time and there's something really lovely about that. And the idea of coming back to the same place, I'm doing the same drawing. That is cool. Hey y'all. So it is my second night in this national park. And I will say it's so much easier to do life when traveling versus staying in town. Many reasons it's easier to cook because I can just go to a picnic area or I can go to a rest stop. So many places for me to cook food versus when I'm in a town. Yes, there are picnic areas at parks. Now in the place where I live, it seems like all the picnic areas at parks, the parking is nowhere near where the picnic tables are. So you have to carry everything really kind of far, which is okay if you're with a bunch of people, you're with your friends and you're all doing a bunch of things. But as for me to like make my normal meal, it's just a huge hassle. And then also the parks by me, the parking, 
where the picnic tables are convenient is in the full sun. And it's hot enough where that matters. Around here, in the towns around here, I actually think in the town I was in last, I could have cooked there. The picnic tables were close enough. It was more just like I had a migraine, so I was having problems. So I got Panera Bread and had soup. Yeah, that's so much easier, but then also at night. All right, so I'm at a campground, and there's a bathroom here. And it's actually like a real bathroom with flush toilets, with running water that you actually can turn the water on and off, with soap, with paper towels, with a mirror that has like a shelf. So when you're going to brush your teeth, you put all your little things there. It's like a height of luxury. And then also, I don't have to be stealth. I'm at a campground. So I can be here in my car with all these lights on because the thing is, this isn't perfect. There's little tiny bits. So, because I've actually tested this when I was at a campground. And if I have the lights on in here, it's obvious someone is in here with the lights on. This is, which is why when I'm in town and I'm being stealth, I do not turn any of these interior lights on. But when I'm traveling and I'm camping, it's like, yes, there's someone in here. You can't see what I'm doing. I also... I did kind of put uh, something right here to block that little spot. I, I'm, I'm going to get something better, right? but that's fine. A little cloth is, is totally fine. So yeah, it just makes things a lot simpler, a lot simpler. I also weirdly, I don't know if this is weird, but I'm much more tolerant of there being a big giant mess inside the car. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm traveling around and I'm just inherently like, not thinking about it or something, but yeah. So it becomes more and more of a mess here, but it doesn't bother me at all. I mean, I'm cleaning it up right now. It's actually what I'm in the middle of doing is reorganizing in here, but more just because it's not functional, not because it's bothering me in the same way. I've already organized this stuff up here. Everything's in their correct bag. I'm creating a pile up here of stuff that needs to go in the trunk. And then next is that pile, which mostly is messed up because I haven't gotten it all organized in the sense of like created a new organization for it. The problem I have right now is I have both summer clothes and winter clothes all together and all my dirty laundry. And it's hard to have both sets of clothes organized. Like that's just a lot of clothes. And I only brought a week's worth of each, mostly because there's going to be certain times where I I don't want to do laundry more than once a week. And there's gonna be weeks where I'm only gonna wear clothes for warm weather or only wear clothes for cold weather. So I'm gonna do laundry, not tomorrow, but the next day when I'm gonna be in town. So then I will have all clean laundry and I'll have to reorganize all that laundry. And then something interesting will happen that I'm, I think it will be okay because I'm gonna actually be in town when this is happening and it will probably necessitate me eating out some, but it is going to be raining most likely in the next couple of days. I won't be out here in the park anymore. I'll be in towns and I'll be working. So that's why I was like, you know, I'm just gonna be working so, and hopefully not having a migraine and actually be able to work. I have client work to do. I also have just editing video and I made almost no progress at any video the last day I was working. So I actually need to. I'm going to be spending a couple days in, to, like, I'm going to be moving down to a different national park, but I'm going to be spending most of the time actually in town so I can be productive and get a bunch of work done. I also, here's another thing. I slept so much better last night. I sleep better when it's like 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And, you know, it's funny because people a bit, I had people say like, how are you going to keep warm? It was 30 degrees last night. But all I did was, I mean, I'll show you my blanket. So I have this, I have this blanket, this blanket, and then my little thing for, so I don't get too hot. And now the other difference is I actually wore long sleeves on my top and long and bottoms, but I mean, it was just leggings. Just like, I mean, I, this is all cotton. I haven't even switched over to wool. I think the problem I will have is my battery. So interesting. So my battery, which is now at 100%, usually it would go from 100 to about 83% in one night. And it went from 100 to 77%. It was less efficient because it was colder. So that does matter. But 
I mean, I just charge the next day, no problem. There's a certain temperature which this will not discharge, but actually, let me see if it says it on the back. Discharge temperature is 14 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so if it was lower than 14 degrees Fahrenheit, that would be when I would run into a problem. Tonight, it is, like, the, right now, it's been getting on a 30. Now, in the future, if I was still going to be here on Saturday, which I'm not, it's going to be getting on to 20 degrees at night. So then we're starting to get closer. But the thing is, that's that it, it doesn't get to be that cold in here. As far as, like, my phone and all that stuff, I would probably just stick in my sleep bag with me. Hey all, so I'm doing something different today, which is doing audio tours. So the National Park Service app, which I highly recommend if you're going to any national parks, you download that and then you can download the information from the different national parks that you want to go to. And so you can have it when you're offline. The park that I'm at has a whole bunch of audio tours. I didn't re realize it was on there yesterday because I would have actually used it. But so I've, wait, I've done three of them so far and I'm gonna go do one more. Um, and then I think, um, after that, I think I'm going to go back to my campsite and chill. I've been going from like place to place to place to place to place for days. And I think I need to have an afternoon off. Uh, places also get busier and busier as time goes on. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I go to this next place. This is actually going to be a little ways that I actually don't know how much of it I'm going to do because this is a much longer one. I don't know how much I'm in the mood for today but I'm gonna do this and then I'm going to go go back to my campsite make lunch and chill for a while I actually came back to my site today like I don't know it was like one or two o'clock in the afternoon because I've been leaving every day from wherever I'm sleeping at or before sunrise, it means I have really long days. And I, I've seen most of the, well, I've seen all the first tier stuff at this national park, most of the second tier stuff, and a little bit of the third tier thing. So like, I've seen a lot of stuff and there's a certain point where you're kind of like overwhelmed in your brain <laughs> seeing all these things where it's just like, I'm just... I need a break from the good things. I don't know. It's weird, but you kind of do after three days of this. So I just took the afternoon off to read a book and also kind of, you know, I bathed. <laughs> I actually, like, I'm wearing clean clothes and feel clean. One of the wonderful side effects of going through perimenopause is that my skin has changed is no longer oily and my scalp is no longer oily. So I'm not saying my hair feels great. I mean, I haven't washed, I don't remember how many days. So it's been four days since I've washed my hair. And don't get me wrong, it's kind of limp, I guess you would say at this point, but it's not like terrible. It doesn't bother me. I've been just wearing it up and it's most of the time I'm wearing a hat because it's cold, you know. And then I checked the weather using my Zolio. I'm actually going to do a review of this because I really like this device and find it very helpful when you're unplugged. Not just from an emergency perspective, even though it has this, but from many other reasons. And one of them is that you can use it to check the weather and it gives you weather for your actual location. And so I found out that around 6 p.m., it was going there's a it was going to rain and then also it's going to rain during the night, including in the morning. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to put away all my stuff in the car. So I don't want all my stuff to be wet and then have to put it away wet. Like that just sucks, right? Even my like chair and things like that, that they're not hurt if they're wet, but they need to be dry, you know? Because where am I going to dry it when I leave here? Like in a Walmart parking lot? I don't know how that was going to work. You know what I mean? So I put everything away and here we go. It's six o'clock and it's starting to drizzle. I mean, it's just drizzling, no big deal, but I was already completely prepared for it. So I'm very glad. Now in the morning, if... The rain is done by sunrise and I may get up and cook food and, and everything. But if I wake up in the morning and it's not, I actually already have my iced tea and my bars in here. So I need to leave the car to go to the bathroom and come back in and leave. Like I don't need, and I also got my umbrella out. My umbrella's here. My raincoats are actually just right behind me. They were in the car already. So I'm very like ready for it. So I don't have to dig stuff out of the trunk. Well, a couple of things I've thought about over the last day 
the next couple of days. One of them is I, I really actually do want to figure out backpacking again. I kind of had given up on it after I had all these problems with, there's a fifth wheel going by me, all these problems with dealing with high altitude problems and I had a number of other health problems that some of which have resolved. And then also having sleep apnea so I have a CPAP. But then there's a YouTuber who I follow who does through hiking and, and other kinds of backpacking. Um, she has sleep apnea and she has a same CPAP as I do. And she has a battery and she's still going backpacking. And I'm like, because here's the thing. Back when I went backpacking was a very, very long time ago. And gear wasn't light, as light as it is now. So if I had a backpacking setup that was very, very lightweight, the fact that I have a heavy battery for my CPAP, because a CPAP, I mean, it has weight, but it's pretty light. It'd be the battery that would be the heavy thing. That it could be doable. Especially if I was just going for like one night. Like that's what I would love to be able to do in a place like this or many other national parks or many other wilderness areas is if I could just go out for one night, I could get so far away from the crowd. Maybe two nights. I don't think I'd want to go that much longer. And also that would be really hard with having enough batteries for that. But like just going for one night would make a huge difference because then I could hike, you know, however many miles, camp there. I would be some, you know, I would be off the grid, right? So it makes me feel like that's possible. I'm not doing that anytime soon because I have no room in this situation for backpack, uh, like, like a backpacking backpack. I actually do want to get a different day pack. My day pack is decades old, decades, like more than 20 years old. And it do, what I need, it doesn't have. And I see people like today, I was looking at people's day packs being like, that looks like, you know, oh, that REI 40, that looks perfect. Because I needed something with that. I want something that has a waist belt. No, that's what it's called. Hip, be, hip, be, hip, hip belt to distribute weight better. And I want to have pockets up there to put all the little things, you know, like where's my phone go, all that kind of stuff. And also I need the water bottle things to be more accessible so I could grab them while I'm hiking. I have to take this pack off to get to the water bottles. It's super annoying. So I did look and my CPAP says it only goes down to 42 degrees Fahrenheit. I could leave my... Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Can you hear that? It's raining. It's the first time I've been in my car like at night with the sound of rain.